Hey, how you doing? Ando here from senseiando.com. So I have a video out there called How to Take a Punch. And in that video, I talk about how calling timeout every time you get hurt during your training might actually build a habit that could get you killed in a real fight. Well, there's a flip side to that. You might be building the same habit even when you're winning. Let's see if we can fix that right now. Okay, one of the worst habits you will find in martial arts training is stopping when you're winning. You see it during sparring and karate tournaments all the time. Somebody lands a big punch and then they turn around, walk away, fix their belt. Hey, hot shot, listen, the fight isn't over. As a matter of fact, it just got started. In a real fight, if you just came lunging at me and you scored with a big punch, unless you stuck a knife in my, even if you stuck a knife in my heart, I still have a couple of seconds in my dying brain where my only thought is gonna be, I'm gonna kill that guy. Now, I'm not just trying to sound tough here. You would do the same thing, right? You're not gonna give up. And that's why I don't care why you're studying martial arts, whether it's for fun, fitness, sports, self-defense, you should never ever turn your back or let your guard down, even when you're winning. You may get away with that in a tournament, but if you try that in real life, instead of getting a shiny trophy for your shelf, you might end up with a shiny knife in your back. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm just making fun of karate guys here. I'm not. You'll see the same bad habit in every style. Back when I took Aikido, and this was years ago, but it still makes me laugh, there was a guy who finished every technique like this. He would, he would get a lock, he would take the guy down, pin him, and then he would just look off into space like he was about to ascend into heaven with a halo on his head. It was ridiculous. Now, I'm sure you don't do that. That guy was a lunatic. But let me ask you this. What do you do? The last time you scored a point or you got a tap, what did you do right after? Did you relax? Did you look away? Did you fix your belt? Of course you did. Everybody does. I do too. But we shouldn't. Just imagine doing that in a real fight. There's a bad guy. You take him down. Maybe you put him in an arm lock. Maybe you even break his arm. Your friends start cheering and high-fiving. They're pretty impressed. Hey, maybe you're not a weirdo for taking martial arts and wearing that headband all the time. Okay, hero, so there you are. You got him down. Now what? Best case scenario, the bad guy curls up and he cries, he apologizes, he fishes out $200 in cash and he gives it to you so you can take your girlfriend out for a nice steak dinner. Cool. But it's also possible that he freaks out. He bites your leg and he starts thrashing around like a shark. Or maybe he pulls a knife out of his boot and stabs you in the heart. Or maybe his girlfriend storms over and she drives a high heel right into your temple. Look, the point is, there are a million and one ways that your fantasy fight can turn into a real horror show. That's why you must never let your guard down or turn your back. Train yourself to finish the fight. Exit clean. Think about someone like Henzo Gracie. Mr. Gracie is a pretty tough guy. That's why I just called him Mr. Gracie. Now, Mr. Gracie proved that he would rather let you break his arm than to tap out. Think about that for a second. That kind of warrior attitude, that never say die spirit, it basically proves that arm bars and kimuras and all kinds of ugly moves that you know in martial arts aren't gonna be enough necessarily in a self-defense situation. Think about it. If the guy who teaches arm bars tells you that arm bars aren't enough to stop him from trying to kill you, well, you might wanna learn a few more moves. And the first move you should learn is making sure that you never let your guard down even when you think you're winning. The bottom line, a fight ain't over till it's over. And how will you know when it's over? How about this? How about when you're at home, on the couch, enjoying a bowl of ice cream? Nah, even then the fight's not over. The bad guy might still find out where you live, drive by and shoot up your place. That's why if you're smart, you don't ever want to fight, ever. The sad truth is a fight's not over just because the good guy says it's over. It's only over when the bad guy says it's over. So here's my tip. Train yourself to manage the end of your fight as carefully as you're managing the beginning and the middle of your fight. I don't care if you're sparring, if you're rolling, or even just hitting a bag. Always imagine that you're in a real life self-defense situation. The next time you score a point or you get a tap, good for you, but that doesn't mean the fight's over yet. So don't relax, don't pose, don't celebrate, stay on guard. And hey, do your training partners a favor. The next time you see someone turn away a little too early or let their guard down a little too soon, just tap them on the shoulder and say, careful, or kick them right in the back of the head. I leave that up to you. Just make sure that you're training yourself to always finish your fights and escape safely. Otherwise, the next fight you win might be the last fight you lose. And that, my friend, is your tip. 
If you'd like to be first in line to catch the next one, don't forget to hit subscribe and find the link to get on my free email updates list. Until next time, keep your guard up and keep fighting for a happy life.